Well, praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the evening that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in this. Is Pastor Jonathan McKnight, thank you for joining us tonight on our 7.30 p.m. prayer call. It is a blessing to be able to have us on this call tonight. Grateful unto God that he has allowed us to see and to experience another day. What a blessing it is. We just want to start out by decreeing and speaking blessings in favor, increase, protection, healing, joy, and peace, greater anointing, all of those things we decree it and we declare it in, through, and around your life and also for your family. I want you to just be sure that you do this. Remember that Proverbs 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. That scripture is so needed right now in this world today. We need it like we've never needed it before. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're standing on the promises of God, believing and trusting him, like we've never had before. We're in the season to where we need intercessors. And tonight, I'm just going to take a few moments, and I'm going to, um, for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about chosen to become an intercessor. And tonight, we're going to conclude this series tonight, and there's some definitely some key points that I want to make tonight about uh, some of the things we need to do and some of the requirements that we need to have to become an intercessor, not only for yourself, but for others, not only for just the people you know, but for the entire world, we need to be able to cry out to God. Because Ezekiel 22 and 30, Father blessed his teaching tonight in Jesus' name. Ezekiel 22 and 30 says this, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. That scripture, that chapter, and that verse brings so many thoughts about the power of intercession. We fully understand that when we walk in the power of intercession, we have made it known that Jesus himself is our intercessor, um, that he sits on the right hand of the Father. Also, in the book of Romans 8, 26 and 27, we discussed about the Spirit of God we needed as an intercessor in our prayer life because we don't even know sometimes how we should pray as we all. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us according to the will of God for our life. I want you to just make it a practical and a practicing habit to be able to stand in the gap for our loved ones, our family members, our friends, our associates, coworkers, our community, our cities, our streets, our neighborhoods, our country, and around this world, that we need to be able to even pray for others who might not even be consciously aware that they need prayer or understand the power of prayer simply defining it, we want to intercede for our families. We want to intercede for souls continually, for salvation, for healing, for deliverance, for all sicknesses and diseases. We want to intercede against all the provokers of hatred, the ones who are provoking constant havoc. When we say the word intercessor, we think about a person who intervenes on the behalf of another. You know, we are all still the product of intercession. 
every one of us have had to have someone else and has had someone else pray for us, or we probably or we will not perhaps be here right now. I know the prayers not only of the righteous, but the prayers of my parents, the prayers of my grandparents, the prayers of the intercessors that are around my life, the prayers of Sanctuary Praise Ministries, and many others. I know without a shadow of a doubt that those prayers have been an intricate and a very important part of my life. We need to understand that you were chosen. Make no mistake about it. I believe every person on this call was hand-picked by God to be able to stand on the word of God in such a way to where we know that his hand and his power is what we need like never before. I am believing God that the greatest days of manifestation of intercession is coming now. We need God to interrupt and intercept every demonic plot, scheme, or plan. We need intercessors. And with that being said, that means we need you. We need to touch and agree and understand that you might be the very person picked in your family. I didn't say the only person, but the very person who understands the keys, the wisdom, the power, and the force that prayer is. Prayer is a force. Prayer is a defense. Prayer is peace. Prayer is safety. Prayer is direction. Prayer is protection. Prayer is the line of communication to build a closer relationship with God. Prayer is a stance of expression to where we can express to God how we feel. It's a place of seeking by which we can seek after things and direction from God to make sure we're on point, to make sure we're on course. Prayer is a relief. I want to stop for a moment and talk about that for a second. Prayer is a relief. If you just think about things, if you allow your circumstances, issues, problems, and whatever else to consume you, you are now potentially in the place of heaviness, Stress, burdens, anxiety, and a whole lot more. But prayer is a relief that can create a spiritual release. Prayer, knowing that God has heard you, gives you a position to be able to trust and be able to rest at the same time. Sometimes when I think about how life goes, it appears that so many things just unexpected, just unexpected, didn't see it coming, blindsided, hit by something that you never would have planned for. But prayer is the compass. Prayer is the shield. It's the pavilion. It's safety. And it's a covering. Prayer is like having direct access, and it's direct access to the promises of God and the position to be able to connect on earth as it is in heaven. I want you to understand that you are needed and you are important. If you have kids in school, grandkids in school, if you have situations in the workplace, like the workplace is becoming, in many cases, a war zone. There are so many disgruntled employees. There are so many people who are, who are 
claiming that they're being treated unfairly, they're overworked and underpaid, they, they are, the environment is tense, people are on edge, and we need the sound of prayer. And I just speak covering and protection, even in the workplaces. And we intercede for our school system, elementary, middle, high school, Votech, community college, universities, for businesses who people are planning, plotting, and scheming to bring destruction and sometimes even the loss of life who are planning horrific crimes because they don't see a way out other than taking from someone or something that does not belong to them. That's why we need to have someone stand in the gap. And tonight that someone is you. You don't have to be a professional at prayer. You don't have to have a title to become and to be an intercessor. You just have to have that will and that desire. You have to be able to have that mindset that not only me, God, but so many around me, so many in my family, so many in my neighborhood, so many in my community, so many on my job, they're lost. They're hurting. They, they feel like they're hopeless and don't know what to do. And, God, I know they feel it because sometimes we feel it. Sometimes we need direction. Sometimes we need that spiritual boost to be able to know that there's power in intercession. There's power when you show God that you're not just concerned about your prayer agenda, but you have been chosen to become an intercessor for yourself, for your family, children, legacy, grandchildren, siblings, mother, father. You have been chosen, sisters, brothers, to be an intercessor, to stand in the gap. I'm going to read Ezekiel 22 and 30, the basis of why it's important. I saw for a man among them that should make up the hedge. What is the hedge? That hedge is called prayer. Who will stand in the gap, that's the shield, who will intercede so God can hear a sound of travail, a sound of worship, a sound of faith, a sound of prayer. Stand in the gap before me, not just before City Hall, not just before the court system, not just before, you know, all this other stuff that we try to get in front of. But I need somebody before me. I need somebody and some of my children that are seeking me honestly. And when I hear the power of intercession, you now can rebuke the devil and the plan that he was trying to continually carry out. With that being said, I have one more scripture I want to read, and I'm going to give you four keys of requirement to be an intercessor. Four keys of requirement to be an intercessor. My next scripture comes from the book of Luke, and I'm going to go to chapter 22. Jesus was getting ready to go to crucifixion to Calvary. He was at the table with his disciples. He was teaching them around verse 24 about who is greatest among you is going to be servant. But there came an issue and Jesus was at the table the Bible says he took the bread and gave thanks, in verse 19, and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, the established Holy Communion, which is given. I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And he said, But behold, the hand of him that betrays me is with me on the table. Now, that's a powerful man. Jesus said, I'm getting ready to die for your sins. And the one that's going to betray me 
is at the table. Called it out. And truly the Son of God goeth as it was determined the woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. Jesus said, nothing good is coming out of the person that's going to betray me. They began, watch this now, verse 23, and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. The disciples started, and the Bible says they began to have strife among themselves. Which of them was going to do this thing? Which, was, which of them was getting ready to do this thing? Who, who, who's going to do this? Who's going to betray Christ? They begin to inquire among themselves, which is interesting. It looked like rather than inquiring, it should have been saying something like, I know it's not me. There was strife among them. And he sent unto them the kings of the Gentiles exercised lordship over them, and they exercised authority upon them, are all called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be the younger, and let him be the one who serves. So, an uh, issue at the Lord's Supper. All of a sudden, he began to, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father, which appoint unto me. And then I come to verse 31. I'm grateful for this verse. He said in verse 31, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, or Peter, Peter, any time, you see in Scripture that either God, the prophet, Jesus, anyone will say someone's names twice. There's an emphasis on the importance. Simon, Simon, get your attention and your focus. Behold, Satan, listen to the way Jesus said it, hath desired to have you. The devil wants you, Peter. He hath. Not is going to want you. He's had a desire to have you. And here is the purpose that he may sift you as wheat. The devil wants to destroy you, Peter. Simon, he wants to destroy your life. He wants to sift you, he wants to break you down to ain't nothing left. He don't even want you to exist. But I want you to hear this next verse. Verse 32. I'm in Luke, 22nd chapter. But I have prayed for thee. <laughs> I have been chosen to be your intercessor. Somebody ought to give God some praise right now while you're listening to this now because you know what? There's been situations in every one of our life. Don't try to be all deep. Don't try to be all holier than thou. Don't let your title or your opinion or how wonderful you think you are. There's been a situation and circumstances in every one of our life where the, I know the devil has had attempts against my life. He's tried it on several occasions in many ways, shape, or form. But Jesus was our intercessor. If the devil wanted Peter because he was following Jesus, that means he also wants you. That means he also wants me. But he said, but I have prayed for thee. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, I'm going to pray for you. He didn't say, let us join hands right now. Because he already knew there was a betrayer at the table. He said, I have prayed past tense already. I've already put it in the archives of intercession. I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. He prayed for his faith. And I think that's something that we don't pray for enough for one another. Because sometimes faith can be 
a challenging task. Sometimes your faith might be on one level one day, but depending upon the circumstances, it might be more difficult. But then that's why we use the power of intercession so we can pray for each other's faith. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. He said, I pray that your faith will fail not. And when thou art converted, <laughs> not if you get converted, you're going to be converted. And you're going to have to strengthen my brethren. Peter thought he knew himself so good. He started re- re- refusing what Jesus had said. He said, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to go with thee. He said, you know, Jesus was like, you don't even know what you're getting ready to run into. That's why I pray for you in advance. He said, I'm ready to go in prison. Peter said, I'm ready to go in prison. I'm ready to even die. Jesus said, before the cock quote thrice, you're going to deny me. But you're going to be converted because I've already become your intercessor. Aren't you glad that he had grace and he still has grace in place for us? When we can talk all our big talk and have our spiritual pom pom, and he already know you're going to mess up and miss the mark. He said, but when you become converted, strengthen your brothers. How is he going to strengthen them? By encouraging them to keep the faith, but also become their intercessors as well. Now, here are the four keys. And I'm going to close this out and I'm getting ready to pray. The four requirements to be an effective intercessor. Number one, if you're going to be an effective intercessor, you have to be a worshiper of God with a pure heart. When Jesus' disciples said, teach us how to pray, he said, here's how you ought to pray. I'm a father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We, we, we start now with worship. We're blessing him in his sovereignty, in his deity, in his power, in his awesomeness. You cannot be an effective intercessor and don't embrace worship. And the worship doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in the atmosphere of a church. And you can have personal worship, just like you can have private intercession. You have to be a worshiper. Worship needs to be in your system to where you can't go too many days or you can't go too many hours or you can't go weeks without giving God praise yourself to where you have your own one-on-one time with God, to where you feed your spirit in worship. Because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So the first thing you have to do is you need to be a worshiper of God with a pure heart. And sometimes it's not even playing a worship song. Sometimes it's, Lord, I bless you. Lord, I give you honor. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I give you praise. Thank you for being so good to me. I bless you for your awesomeness. Thank you for keeping my mind today. Thank you for directing my path. Thank you for waking us up this way. That's worship. Second thing you need to do is you have to have a fervent or intense committed prayer life. You cannot be an effective intercessor and not want to embrace the mantle and the passion of prayer. Sometimes you might be praying, sitting on the couch. Sometimes you might be praying, kneeling on your knees. Sometimes you might be praying, laying down prostrate on the floor. Sometimes you might be praying, just sitting on the edge of the bed. Sometimes different people have different, you know, you know, physical capabilities or restraints. And they might not can always pray on their knees. There might be other things. You know, some of y'all are getting a little old on your knees and your back getting bad and stuff like that. So however you need to pray, it's not so much the posture. I don't believe 
I believe that it's the position of your spirit and your heart. But you got to pray to God. You got to talk to him. And prayer and intercession is not just you doing all the talking and then you hang up the phone on God. What if he has something for you to say? I'm telling you something right now. Direction after worship and prayer, there should be moments and times by which you ask God to direct you. And that's because when you pray in the Spirit, the Spirit will give you instructions as an intercessor. Notice Jesus said, say, in, in the midst of knowing, he said, Satan wants to destroy you, Peter. I've already prayed for you. You're going to need to be converted. Your mind's going to have to change. Or when repentance comes in your life, I pray that your faith will fail not. There's going to be some stuff that's going to try your faith. But if you keep the faith, you're going to win this battle. So that's the second thing, having a further prayer in life. The third thing is, is readily increasing believing the word of God. Increasing building the word and believing the word of God. You cannot believe God's word if you don't read it, if you don't hear it, if you don't digest it, if you don't process it. You got to put that word in you because the word Level three helps level two. What's level two? Level two is having a fervent, effectual prayer life. Well, if you don't pray according to the spirit, according to the word, then the power of your intercession is weakened because you're not using his word in the intercession. Yes, you can use your words. You can tell God how you feel. Now we like saying, church, put a praise on it, put a word on it too. Okay, so you want to make sure you're increasing and believing the word of God. The more you feed yourself the word, the more word gets in you. You can't just be putting posts and nuggets in you. Might be some great stuff people can come up with. Great post. Hashtag get the word because that's going to be where your power is, okay? And the fourth thing, as I get ready to pray for you, is you got to build a personal, not just a church, not just a relationship. You know what's amazing when I just said that, what just came in my spirit? A lot of people want fellowship, but they don't want relationship. You can come to church every Sunday and fellowship or be around and engage with people. But that doesn't mean you have a solid relationship with God. I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me well. When you build a real relationship with honor, trust, respect, celebration, it builds a level of trust. The relationship with God is built when you communicate with him, embrace what he said, refuse to be a people pleaser or just a crowd follower. You've made up in your mind one of the most important things that I possess in life is this. In the book of John 15, it says, when you build that relationship, it says this, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you stay in me and make sure I stay in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. You have been chosen to be an intercessor. And that, that doesn't say you can't do anything else. You still be a doctor, lawyer, pastor, nurse, 
educator, school teacher, banker, lawyer, whatever you want to be. But nothing from a career standpoint, nothing from being a, just because you're a husband, just because you're a wife, just because you might have a good business career, it does not forfeit the responsibility that you've been chosen to be an intercessor. Luke 18 says, men are to always pray and not faint. We all have the mantle and the responsibility to stand in the gap. And we can't naturally assume that someone else is already doing it. There might be situations to where we need to stand in the gap for each other because there's no one standing. We never do intercession by assumption. We do intercession in a session by reality. So we're ready to go to the throne of grace. I'm going to pray for you that you embrace the mantle. And the more you embrace the mantle of prayer, the more powerful your life and your spirit become. The more doors will become open in your life, the more favor will be invoked. We'll see salvation. We need laborers in the kingdom. But it first starts with being that one that can stand in the gap. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Tonight you have spoken so passionately to us. We hear you. And God, we thank you because we want to please you. We thank you tonight because... You are God. You are awesome. You're mighty. You're holy. Your name is true. Thank you for giving your son, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying for us. Thank you for loving us when we have been figuring out the best way to love ourselves. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for watching over us. Not only all night long, but all throughout our life. When you had to witness some things that perhaps let you down, you still loved us. I'm asking you to save those, and we intercede for those who need to be saved our family members, our friends, our loved ones, our co-workers, our associates, our members, our neighbors, our community leaders. I just, we intercede. We intercede for our government, our school system, our medical arena, our court system, our judicial system, our law enforcement, we intercede for the doctors and the nurses and the hospital workers and the hospice workers, those that are helping those in the urgent care centers. We intercede for our military troops, our first responders, our respiratory therapists, nurse practitioners. We intercede. We even intercede for people who are consistently just burying the dead we intercede for our children in school, our seniors who are lonely, and all of those who are helpless and homeless, broken, bitter, mentally battered. We intercede. We intercede for those who are struggling with infirmities, sicknesses, and diseases, questionable things in our health, our organs, our heart, liver, kidney, lung, breathing, blood, blood circulation. We intercede that by Jesus' Christ we are healed. We come against lack and we bind it. We come against poverty and we ask you to remove it. But God, we need understanding and we need direction. Give us wisdom and give us peace. 
We come against the spirit of separatism, divide, evil, rebellion, disobedience, broken homes, broken families, heal them, broken marriages, mend them. We come against the very spirit of suicide. We intercede for those who are addicted to drugs, whether by way of substance abuse, solid, liquid. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We come against the very spirit of suicide. We come against depression, oppression, mental failure. We come against the voices of demons and the devil trying to influence people's minds to hurt and injure others. Tonight, God, you're the best and only true help that can release miracles and protection, guidance and direction all at the same time. We walk in your timing. We want to walk in your will. We pray for those who have no hope. Tonight I'm interceding for the hopeless, that that teenage mom, that single mother, that family, that wife, that husband, those children, those grandchildren the people who are broken and the people who are tired, the people who are fighting to try to stop crying, ones that seem like the only friends that they have is anxiety and stress. I bind the devil now and I speak victory over their life. We decree miracles over their life. We pray for our spiritual leadership. We pray for our spiritual mentors. We pray for our spiritual covering. Let the word live inside of us. We pray for energy. We pray for momentum. We pray, God, for dreams, goals, and successes that will bring you glory. We promise you, God, we can't contend with your glory. But be glorified in the heavens and be glorified on the earth. We speak to every mountain spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, psychologically. And we say, be thou removed. We come against every blockage, every gate of adversity, every pitfall hidden on green grass. We bind the very spirit of deception, destruction, Every wrong motive and every lie from the pit of hell, we bind Satan now and we decree that no cycle, no generation of curse. We speak miraculous favor and miraculous debt cancellation with supernatural overflow. We intercede for those who are lost, stricken, and sick and being overtaken by sin. Let them cry out and be saved and say, what must I do to be saved? We pray for all of the cancer victims that you heal them, all the COVID and Delta variant and just sickness at large. Let there be a blood shield, a blood wall. Give us angelic protection and God-given direction that protects us. Personally, I ask you, or a greater insight of your word. And for all of us, give us divine discernment to make wise choices. Thank you for wisdom tonight. Thank you for peace. And thank you for giving all of us a better life. We ask this prayer. We decree it and declare it. What sort of things that we desire when we pray, we believe that we shall receive it. Thank you for the mantle of intercession. Thank you for fulfilling our purpose and our destiny. For our lives will never be the same. We decree it. We declare it. We claim it. 
and it's already ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.